Hello, everyone. Thank you for staying in. It's difficult to upstage Bowie and its black flips because of my age, I think. Uh, I'll try. Uh, I think I'll be able to do somewhat around that. Um, well, I'll be speaking today, today about um, breakthroughs in trade ideation, execution, and um, sort of like risk management uh, from a flavor of sort of gen AI type applications um, and then moving on to what sort of uh, areas that we have tried to kind of enrich um, using our own secret sauce. So you will see three typical use cases um, on sort of um, unstructured data uh, from a signal, so like leveraging it for signal generation, which can be used for trading. Um, you, can, you will see a couple of real-time patterns uh, and then man merging both of unstructured and the structured data. I'll take you through those uh, uh, when I kind of like go to those sections. Uh, first, a bit of introductions, why we are here, why Ashlyn has invited us. Um, thank you, um, because we have uh, supported mission-critical um, applications for banks, hedge funds, exchanges over 30 years um, around, uh, and we've kind of like uh, invented kind of like um, various sort of like applications, tools um, for supporting most of these are partners and sort of um, our uh, clients. Some of these use cases may or may not be from these, but it might be a sort of like a, a bridge version of these. But we'll, I'll kind of, without kind of like divulging too much, I would kind of like um, give you where, where the focus has been. Um, from my perspective, I've been 12 years into sort of like banking and financial services area, um, mainly predominantly working with Barclays, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch on trading desks. Uh, so I was sort of like recipient in usage of these sort of like systems. And thanks to ASOS team for telling me I'm not their target customer for like a good while now. So that tells my age. So uh, AI landscape, just a bit, bit of positioning around AI landscape is huge. Um, I would need my NANS glasses to kind of like find out where the KX is. And you can see there's plethora of options. Uh, so how do people decide on what sort of um, applications to work on, how do you use uh, to benefit their use cases. You would typically kind of see three fundamental challenges in capital markets. Um, capital markets is uh, bound by a lot of time series, bound by a lot of regulation and typically deploy or uh, uses time series data, which is market data, reference data, and off late a lot of unstructured data, which is your um, investment sort of like reports, your uh, central bank announcements, your regulatory filings, all that combined, how people can kind of use this, that's where people are finding new ways and um, uh, ways to kind of like uh, drive um, uh, alpha or also making excess money uh, than their peers. If you're looking for sizing a solution around typical um, areas of, uh, that deploys traditional or even um, Gen AI, Time and again, we have seen four major things uh, that clients have talked about. Precision, recall, sort of like accuracy. Uh, you could see anything in a heavy regula heavily regulated industry like ours, uh, any sort of like hallucination, which people have spoken about before, can be detrimental to results or even your uh, regulatory obligations. Um, also, the cost of setup and cost of um, sort of like running costs. So you can have the fanciest model, but you have to kind of like think about setup costs. And also in this morning session, John and the ICO spoke about AI before, AI now and AI next, which is what is your data strategy? If your data strategy is not fitting in properly, you can spend on the latest, um, you can spend millions on latest models, but it will not yield results around it. So we have seen from our clients accuracy, latency, uh, and typically uh, cost setups as um, fundamental challenge. Le Lately, what we have seen is scale becoming a lot of lot more important um, across our clients as well. Uh, one of our clients is trialing billion vectors, and I'll come to uh, retrieval augmented flow and vector embeddings. Uh, they're trialing one billion vectors across anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000 dimen dimensions to kind of look at feature extractions, which can aid their trading strategy. At that scale, you can see a lot of demos are about 10,000, 30,000, 100,000 documents and stuff like that, but can, it needs a lot of scale. And that's where we are kind of uh, playing across uh, with our history and pedigree. 
So this use case typically is the first use case around unstructured um, uh, uh, data, where people have tried to augment or see to what um, data that you're looking at from an unstructured perspective, and your such as SEC filings, investor calls, uh, CE announcements, for instance, um, and use that as a way of either cutting size on position, use a sentiment, sentiment indicator on top, and try to uh, leverage sort of uh, alpha on it. Uh, so typical workflow that people are looking at, it is in terms of uh, on the top that you're seeing various documents being chunked um, and fed into, converted into embeddings, stored into a vector database, that's us, but that can be even a graph database if you want to. Um, and then on the prompt side, you're using a retrieval augmented generation workflow where you're arming your uh, sort of like LLM to take information from your knowledge store because the banking is a very heavily regulated industry. We want the source to be credible before that uh, actionable insights are produced. And once uh, a ranked search is retrieved, um, your prompt query and the ranked results are passed to your LLM for LLM to choose from uh, ground its results based on the data. What's the result of this? Typically what you will see is something like this. Uh, Boeing, uh, obviously this was before the door fell off, but you would see time and again uh, there were supply constraints and quality concerns being mentioned through the press calls, regulatory filings across the board. So could that, could a hedge fund basically take advantage of those sightings to cut down the positions before it kind of, or take advantage of that because that is probably rock bottom and the prices will rise up. Uh, what do you see, the line in purple is a sentiment indicator based on how many times quality issues or supplier issues have been spoken about. Higher the purple line means uh, the supply issues, that's more negative. And you can clearly see price being correlating to those sort of areas. And with our history in time series um, data, we can very quickly correlate that uh, with negative sentiment. And that greens are typically a buying decisions versus uh, red is a sell decision. So this was sort of like uh, on unstructured data. One of our clients is trialing out 67 million news events and about 600,000 documents to glean these sort of insights. Moving further to sort of like a real-time use case, and this is where we are, uh, this is some of our uh, technology or our capability of understanding time series. In this case, it uses a non-transformed time series similarity search. So we have borrowed from the Gen AI application, and what we are trying to do is um, use it to see patterns in shape of curve. So what we have done here is about a three minute sort of 180 uh, data points window on the real-time uh, real ticker. And what you will see below is it's kind of like trying to search for similarity search on um, historical data for a particular stock. And you will kind of like, uh, you, what you will see is uh, nearest, five nearest neighbors or 10 nearest neighbors, depending on your capacity and constraints. Um, you can bring that and also showcase after the third 180 point where the price goes in. And it will be very, um, easy to kind of um, showcase this uh, in an extended sort of like patterns. It will be better shown in an example that I'll show you now. So it talks about, here we have taken Tesla data, which is um, one second, per se every second the data is coming in on time series price. Uh, it is uh, four days of, uh, five days of uh, market data. Four days of data we have embedded into sort of like time series and we are trying to see an anomaly over fifth day. Volume, we have bucketed over uh, sort of like an hourly range, but pricing is bucketed at sort of a one, uh, sort of one second bar. In this case, why we have chosen Tesla is because obviously the CEO is treat, uh, sort of like uh, Twitter hungry, so you can kind of like see a lot of price movements very quickly shown. So what we are taking here is very quickly, uh, live pricing, and you'll see it update every two seconds, and it kind of like brings in the price. Um, and you, on the bottom, you'll see the dark line is the current price, and the sort of like faint lines, I don't know whether it's uh, uh, visible, are the sort of five nearest neighbors from its history. So the price on the top is 7th August, which is the live data, and then previously we have four worth days of market data. Uh, it's from 3rd August, 4th August, 5th August. It's kind of like predicting nearest neighbors. So where you can use this is to typically um, take into account what your price is doing now, what is the nearest shape it matters, it, it kind of leverages to or corresponds to from a previous history and where it can go. So it can be an input to your prediction, sort of like a predicting model. Uh, 
what you currently see is the price has deviated by massive amount, which is five standard deviations. You can use a sigma score or you can use a metric around it to on the similarity of the curve. So what it is trying to do is shape of the curve as a, from its nearest neighbor has moved uh, certain standard deviations away. And that's what it tries to flag. And you can see very clearly that red line means there's something that needs to be investigated. I'll pause this here and you will quickly see is there is an Elon Musk tweet saying trying to take Tesla private. So that's uh, given you uh, a shape of curve sort of like deviation, which is what some of our clients are trying to look at as well. Um, moving further, and this is where um, we are trying to bring the structured and unstructured um, area, uh, sort of like areas of Gen AI, trying to bring them together. Um, what we've done, and there are two ways, and again, coming back to the scale and challenges, uh, either you can convert trigger events and store them uh, along with sort of like a history of what of the price, sim or, or what of the securities or uh, instruments that you deal with. And typically in a uh, trading environment, you will have symbols such as uh, Uber, tickers that you will store. And then you can pass these, uh, uh, you, then you can look for some instruments or information in a live news stream uh, and see which embeddings are the closest to anything that is being spoken about in the news headline. Pull that information out very quickly, correlate with past similar events around, and see what has the impact been on the price to simulate what the current um, issue or current ticker will face, uh, face uh, currently. So we have taken an example of Uber, and this is what uh, our clients are doing across number of um, uh, tickers. But Uber had a data breach. Uh, so what we have done is data breach, just to re reduce cost, we have kind of search, put the search terms uh, that it needs to look in the headlines, but uh, as a sort of like an alert config to give an alert. Based on this, um, it pulled out and noted that the news event is talking about um, Uber, matched the symbol, retrieved the price, and showcased what it will try to do. It was also tried to look at multiple past event of data breaches, what has happened to the stock, and put out all those information, and put out the price movements um, uh, of those impacts. So you can see current situation versus what has happened in the past. Uh, there's some gimmicky stuff as well. You, if you're in sales, uh, typically my sales contingent is back there. They would love, I want to inform my clients about um, uh, the details or breach and maybe that will help them trading posi uh, positions. So Gen AI workflow can quickly distill the news event, put a nice formatted um, sort of like email out to your client saying, look, this has happened. I'll quickly show you this. It moves fairly quickly. On the left-hand side, you're seeing alert matching something around the terms that we've talked about. It has brought Uber. What it has done is, given the insights of the article, uh, retrieval augmented generation flow has worked. Uh, it has given you the source. This is the sales piece where your sales people disseminate information out to your clients. And what it does is it tries to correlate what historical events have happened where there has been data breach. So you can see JP Morgan faced something and what was the impact of the price and how it price performed uh, throughout. You also have many such examples. So at this point of time, the Uber news, you can see the Bloomberg link. Uh, when the, the news hit, it was the price was at bottom. So what it is trying to do is you can try to, from, from the, uh, all the other sort of like previous impacts, you can see if the company management has done taken some action or company management is very reliable, what you can do is, um, take a punt on that stock uh, and uh, make sure that um, you, you're positioned to trade either ways, whether whatever you believe, short or long. Uh, oh, by the way, this is all information only. If you trade on the back of this, that's your risk, not mine. So just just a disclaimer there, because I know there are regulators here. I think Pamela <laughs> was here, she'll kind of like beat me with a stick. Uh, so this is all information only. Uh, and that's pretty much what I wanted to showcase Across board, and I'll be happy. I'll be in the room, and I'll be happy to take uh, your questions across the board. Thank you, your cakes.